What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Brave and Faithful Podcast. I'm your host, Raiden Dionisio. And uh, today I have another active duty, uh, active duty naval officer. Uh, he is the co owner of Storehouse 310 Ventures, a real estate company focused on giving back to the church and the community. I have none other than Mr. Stuart Grazier. How's it going, Stuart? Good, man. How are you doing? Thank Good you for. Uh... Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I'm honored to be here. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time. Um, so before we get started on, uh, you know, your business ventures, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, service and, you know, where you're at right now? Yeah, of course, man. Um, so I am a naval officer, just like you said. Uh, I flew uh, helicopters. Okay. I will take it back a little bit. I went to uh, the Naval Academy, um, graduated there in 2002. And, uh, and then went to flight school um, and uh, chose helicopters, uh, flew helicopters for 10 years, most in, uh, most in San Diego, uh, deployed multiple times um, when I was doing that, uh, became a flight instructor. And then uh, I went on a, a, a non-Navy tour, went over to Iraq with the Army. I got tagged for a individual augmentation, went with the Civil Affairs Battalion, did a year in Iraq. And uh, that was a interesting time for sure. Um, uh, have lots of memories from that. And then uh, I came back and decided to transition to uh, FTS, which is full-time support. So I'm, I'm technically a reservist, but uh, get full, paid full-time. Uh, flew C-40s, which is a Boeing 737, and then uh, did some staff tours. Uh, now currently at uh, 18 and a half years of service, and I'm the executive officer of the Navy Reserve Center, which is in uh, Denver, Colorado. So almost to retirement, going yeah, to 20, and then we'll then we'll pack it up. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm uh, right there behind you. I just said 17 years. And uh, how's it how's it feel? I mean, you're like you're almost there, um, and you already have some sort of uh, you know what I call as your second service, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm getting excited about it. I'm, you know, I'm trying to continue to, to stay focused on my Navy career because I still have a little bit of time left. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's getting more challenging every day to, uh, you know, because I'm really excited about that transition. Um, I, you know, I really already kind of have a, a business in place and a, a plan in place, which, which, I, you know, I think is, is a really good topic to talk about. Um, and uh, we can kind of dive into that a little bit further if you want. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's exciting, uh, to start looking at that, that transition, that, uh, that second career. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, um, the company that you have now, how did this all come about and, uh, where did this all start? Yeah. So, uh, it, it could be a long story, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've, uh, always been interested in, in entrepreneur, uh, type ventures. You know, I've always kind of tried my hand at different, you know, things while I've been in the Navy. Um, I, I always thought it was a really good idea to kind of have like a little side gig, something, a little side hustle to make money. Um, and real estate has always been really um, of interest to me as well. And so I've been doing real estate on the side for a long time, um, you know, buying some rental properties, you know, I've, I've fixed and flipped properties. I've held rental properties. I've done private lending. I've done the full gamut of things. Um, made a lot of mistakes a lot of, along the way. I've lost money along the way. I've made money along the way. Um, but uh, I'd say about uh, four years ago, I had purchased some properties. I was stationed in Italy and okay. I still wanted to buy real estate. And so I, I looked into this uh, strategy called turnkey. And turnkey is basically when you are buying a property completely renovated, uh, already rented tenant in place, property management in place, and you're buying it from a company um, that uh, kind of claims this turnkey model where they kind of do everything for you and manage it for you and kind of help you along the way. And so I thought it was a really good strategy, especially because I was in Italy and I needed someone to kind of handle that stuff for me. And so I bought four properties in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, don't ask me why I chose Birmingham, Alabama. Don't ask me why I chose the, the company that I chose but uh, it, it was, it was a mistake um, and okay. um, learned a lot of lessons along the way. Uh, I still own them today. I've put a lot of money into them. They've been just so, so, um, but along that same time frame, uh, my best friend from college, he was my roommate for all four years. He did a similar 
type strategy. And he bought some properties uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and he had even worse of an experience to the point of like catching them in big lies, taking them to court um, and eventually settling out of court for a check to him for about $20,000. And um, so, you know, we always talk and compare notes and we started talking about, you know, all the things that had gone wrong um, mm. in, in the business and in in that model and how, you know, since we've both been kind of doing real estate on the side for a long time, uh, we decided that we could do that better and, and do it right and do it with honesty and integrity and in transparency. And instead of trying to just build a business to work for the bottom line, build a business to, to serve and help um, and give um, and, you know, put entrepreneurship alongside of giving and serving and tithing. And so we kind of just came up with this similar strategy of, of this turnkey investing, um, but doing it the way, uh, the right way and doing it with all the lessons learned that we, that we had along the way. And we also kind of wanted to make a transition plan for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, we had always talked about, you know, starting a business together, um, because, you know, just how, how cool it'd be to do business with your best friend, you know? Right. Um, and, uh, so that's what we did about, uh, two and a half years ago, we started, uh, Storehouse 310 Ventures and, uh, we built out a team. Uh, the company is based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, um, you know, we built a team there. Uh, we started buying houses. We started buying them for ourselves first, uh, tested the model out. Um, you know, we had gone through, we've gone through a couple of sets of contractors. We've gone through a couple of sets of property management companies. Um, but uh, we've kind of built this system now and this business to where uh, we are now buying houses, rehabbing them, doing really nice renovations, uh, turning it over to a property management company that, that we really know and trust um, and uh, selling these houses to people within our network, you know, other military, other veterans, um, other, you know, people that have been referred to us and we're helping them teach them how to build wealth uh, through real estate because um, because you can do it while you're still active duty while you're still in the military and if you do it with a team that you trust and that has those principles in place with those core values then um, you know it, it can be a, a good investment for you yeah so. I, I want I want to go over that real quick so um, your partner is also active duty correct from what we yeah. mentioned earlier yeah he so is. So for our um, audience and people that are listening out there right now, it's like, well, what he, you guys are active, dude. How did you guys, because you said you initially bought four properties while you were in Italy. Yeah. How did, how did you get that done? And, you know, what was the whole process about for those that don't know anything, you know, anything about starting? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, um, you know, it's to start, you, you kind of have to have the basic fundamentals of, of, you know, financial literacy, right? Um, and that and that comes to just the basics of uh, having a budget and understanding, you know, what income is coming in, what expenses are going out, um, and living below your means, and uh, you know, having a plan to save money because it takes money to invest to buy real estate. You know, there there are strategies that say like no money down strategies, but uh, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort and. Uh, probably a mistakes along the way to, to do that type of stuff. So, you know, the, the basic model of buying a house, putting 20% down, that takes money. And so, you know, I just saved, like just save, save, save. Every time I go on a deployment, you know, mm -hmm. I try to like minimize all expenses. Um, you know, I'd put everything in storage, I'd, you know, and anything I could to minimize my expenses so I could just save as much money as I possibly could. And, and same when I came back, you know, when I, when I, be living here I, I just try to maintain like low expense rate and have that big savings plan so i can just store up as much money as i possibly could so i could take that and then invest it and so that's what i've been doing i've been doing that for my entire military career and at some point you start to build a pretty big nest egg right um and so um you know i had a decent amount of savings uh set aside to to go invest and so when I was in Italy, I started looking at um, different companies that had this kind of turnkey strategy and, and found this one and started having conversations with them and they had properties available. And, um, you know, the process itself is very easy. Um, you know, you have to get 
a loan and you have to get approved for that. And then it's just um, going through the process of, of home buying. Um, and so, and you can do that from anywhere. I think mean, we've done it now for people that are buying houses from us and we've sold it to guys that are in Japan, in Europe, uh, mm. in Afghanistan, Djibouti. Like we've had uh, the gamut of people and um, it just takes a little bit of effort. And uh, we didn't really talk about it earlier. You have a family as, as well? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm married, got two kids. Uh, I have a almost six-year-old daughter and an almost three-year-old son. So, I mean, uh, for those of you guys that are listening, um, active duty, Navy officer, family, 18 plus years, and he's still doing this, guys. So um, take some of the things that he's telling you guys right now and uh, learn learn from it and uh, take his advice. And I think the main thing is just, you know, if you're interested in real estate investing, it's just get your, get your, get in the game and get started. Um, yep. hundred percent, man. Absolutely. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to hit a grand slam the mm-hmm. first time you do it. Um, the goal is to make base hits. And, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you do base hit after base hit after base hit, you're going to score more runs. And, um, you know, there'll be some, there'll be some wins and there'll be some losses. There'll be uh, mistakes along the way, but you know, if you continue to learn and grow and pick yourself up when you do make those mistakes, you'll be better off for it. So uh, just like you said, man, I, I agree hundred percent. You just, you got to take action. You got to yeah. get in the game. Um, and uh, you know, there's a lot, at least in the real estate world of, uh, of people kind of continuing to sit on the sidelines and just try to get educated and learn as much as they can. And they never take action. And there's this, uh, you know, analysis paralysis where they just continue to look at stuff and they try to find that, you know, the, the most amazing deal out there. And it's just, I'll tell you, it's, it's not out there. Like it's not out there. There's, mm-hmm. there is no like perfect investment situation. So uh, the best thing that you can do is, is take action, get out there. Um, and if you're doing it with a team that, that has like, you know, similar background to you, similar core values um, and, you know, si- similar like integrity, honesty system, then you'll be better off for it for sure. That's awesome, man. So, uh, Stu, what's been, what's been your biggest takeaway um, from from the military, and how did that help you prepare for what you're doing now in your second service? You know, so I think um, something that we all learn while in the military is, um, you know, that they they say adaptability, flexibility, um, and and that ties right into to running a business, um, you know. As, as you know, you know, very well, as, as you're, you know, changing jobs, changing tours, you're going to get probably put into a role that you've never done before and you just have to figure it out. Well, that's the same in business. That's the same in entrepreneurism. Uh, that's the same in your second career. Like you're not going to know everything, but uh, learning that and, and understanding that and realizing how to, uh, you know, use that to your advantage, I think is uh, fantastic when it comes to, you know, moving into that second career. And, and how long have you been investing in, in real estate? I know you said two years ago, you guys started the company, but how long have you total been in? Uh, yeah. Real estate so my, investing? my first real estate investment was, was in flight school. So that was in 2004. Um, so, okay. you know, yeah, a long about time, 16 years, yeah, about 16 years. Yeah. So, and, you know, um, there's been a lot of mistakes along the way. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't always been successful at this stuff. Yeah. So just going into that, I guess what's been, what's been the most challenging or worst experience you've had uh, throughout this, this time of uh, investing in real estate? Uh, well, I, uh, I got caught in a Ponzi scheme and, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I lost about, um, I think it was about $160,000. Um, wow. by, uh, I, I invested with the wrong person. Um, I, I didn't do my, uh, due diligence on this individual. Um, I didn't do enough research. I didn't understand what I was doing and I probably took action too fast. I probably, you know, uh, I am, I am one that, uh, kind of does more of the ready fire aim, you know, like, I take a shot before I really understand what I'm doing before I'm really, before I really am, am aiming at what I'm shooting at. Um, and that really kind of bit me uh, pretty hard on this one occasion. Um, 
you know, I was doing some private lending for a guy that was uh, flipping houses and I didn't know what paperwork uh, that was correct. I didn't know what paperwork was right. And so he was basically like giving me fake paperwork. Um, mm -hmm. And he just, and he was doing that for lots of different investors along the way, um, using the same houses, the same addresses over and over again. And so he was basically like using my money to pay somebody else off and, you know, continuing down the road and it grew and grew and grew to where like he couldn't pay people back anymore. And so I got caught in that. And um, the guy ended up going to jail. He, I think he's probably still in jail and he, he owed millions of dollars to investors. And I was probably one of the small fish wow. uh, in the pond that was in, that was lending money to him. Um, so huge lesson learned, you know, uh, I lost a lot of money in that, but uh, there's always a blessing in disguise in that. So, you know, along that way, you know, I just, I learned a ton and I, I learned how, you know, what to look for, uh, what type of paperwork is, is correct, you know, what questions to ask. Um, and, you know, I've, I've made that back, um, you know, twofold with uh, just the education behind it. And, you know, just, it really just kind of goes back to like, if you learn from your mistakes, um, you will always be better off for it in the long run. So is that part of the reason why you created this, uh, this company and can you tell us a little bit about why the name uh 310 ventures yep absolutely man um so david and i uh are are very we're christians you know we're very faith-based and we wanted to create a company that uh that uh, surrounds ourselves and the people around that uh so storehouse 310 um it comes from a bible verse uh, comes from malachi 310 in the bible um and and the verse uh says uh bring a tithe to the storehouse. And the Lord says, test me in this and see if I will not open up the floodgates of heaven for you. And um, so our business model is uh, every house that we sell, the, all of the profits from our company, the first 10% of our profits go to a charity organization uh, that supports veterans. And um, so we chose uh, at the very beginning of, of our business uh, that we, uh, so Along the way, um, we had some uh, people within our lives uh, that were either classmates from school or shipmates uh, in our commands um, that had committed suicide. Mm. Um, I actually personally uh, had a friend um, from my helicopter squadron uh, call me. And it was it was one of those like cries for help, and uh, I didn't know what to do. Um, I didn't know how to handle it. Um, and, uh, I did as much as I thought I could do at the time. Um, but I, I know I could have done more. Um, and I uh, found out a couple weeks later that, that he took his own life. Um, so that was all happening along the same lot time frame of us building this business. And, um, yeah, we had a classmate commit suicide. Um, and as kind of senior leaders within our commands, we see it all the time. We see, um, you know, sailors and Marines, uh, have suicidal ideations all the time, suicidal tendencies, um, had people in our command commit suicide. So it was, it was a big, it was a big deal to us and it's been on our heart for a long time. And so we tried to find an organization that we could really support and serve, um, and give that 10% of our profits to. And, um, we found a, uh, a, uh, organization called Warrior's Heart. Um, there's, there's two branches of there's Warrior's Heart and then there's the Warrior's Heart Foundation and Warrior's Heart is actually a, um, big 500 acre ranch down in Bandera, Texas. Um, it's outside of San Antonio and it's a healing center, uh, for, for veterans for, and for first responders. Um, and the criteria to, to get into this healing center, um, is that you have had to have, you, you have had to have some type of chemical addiction. You've either had to, uh, been, you know, on drugs or, uh, an alcohol dependency, um, and, um, most have some type of PTSD and, um, suicidal tendencies. And so, uh, you know, TRICARE covers it. Um, and so they take these individuals in, um, that, uh, that need help and they go through this entire healing program. And it's, it's not the normal, like VA type program where you kind of just sit in a round table and kind of spill your guts to people. It's, um, it's a full blown like ranch and, you know, you can go, you can go fishing and you can, they have like a, um, like a, 
a big wood shop and a big place for like uh, a metal shop. You can just like go like bang on metal and like make things. Um, and it really like helps uh, warriors kind of deal with all of these emotions going on. Uh, they have jujitsu and they have like a CrossFit gym and they have all this stuff. That's just amazing. It's, it's just, it's different than just the normal veteran affairs, like, you know, idea of, of trying to heal. Um, and so we, we got connected with them and they, it's an amazing organization. Um, and we support them, you know, with, with all of our money that, that we give uh, for our profits and probably then some, we, we, we've given a lot more than just 10% this year uh, to them. So um, they're really, they're, they're an amazing bunch. So, that's yeah. Awesome, man. So that's Warriors that's, Heart, Hearts Foundation. Where can our yep. audience find out more information on that? Yeah. I mean, if you just Google Warriors Heart, um, it, I think it's just warriorsheart.com. And then they have, war, there'll be a button. Also that link takes you to Warriors Heart Foundation. Okay. Um, and the foundation is the nonprofit that you can give money to. And, and what that does, the foundation is it funds people that, that maybe don't have TRICARE anymore, or maybe that are like in the streets, you know, like, and they don't have insurance um, and they were a veteran, you know, they were a war hero or they were a first responder, but they're just like, you know, no job down on their luck, have nothing going for them. And this foundation will fund them to go through this program and get them better. It's awesome. And I appreciate you guys for, for giving back to the community. Um, so other than that foundation, um, what would you say is, has been the most rewarding moment or ex experience you've had so far since starting this, uh, this company? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So, you know, because um, you know, we're, we're open about our faith um, and uh, we, we talk about it a lot um, openly through, you know, we have a podcast as well. It's called filling the storehouse podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, we, when we have conversations with people, uh, we talk about, you know, our, our principles, our, our core values, one of them, um, you know, being, being giving in service and, and God is, is at the forefront of that. Um, and what's been really cool is, uh, through business, through real estate, uh, people are connecting with the Lord. People are, are finding their faith again. And um, it's really, it's really cool to see um, because it's just having these conversations with people and them, you know, following us on our social media. And, um, you know, I've gotten multiple, like just, just emails or, or texts uh, from guys and gals that, you know, will, will like reach out to us and be like, Hey, this podcast or this post just like completely reached out to me, you know, thank you for what you guys are doing. Um, because of you, I've, I've found the Lord again. And like to, to, for that, like, that's been amazing, you know, to us, it's been, you know, it's, it's really been like uh, a ministry for us. And it's, it's amazing to see uh, that you can use something like a real estate business uh, to get people connected to the Lord again. And so that's, that's been really cool for us. That's, I'm looking at your core values right now. It's uh, service, giving, integrity, and the last thing is laughter. A happy yeah. heart makes the face cheerful. That's right, man. <laughs> That's awesome, bro. Um, That's right. Yeah, so, we like to have fun. We don't. We uh, we try not to, uh, you know, take ourselves too serious. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Got to have part. a laugh every now and then. Yeah, know? man. Got to have a smile. That's the most contagious thing that you can do is smile to somebody. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so for those of you guys just joining in, talking to Stu Grazier, uh, co-owner of the Storehouse 310 Ventures. Uh, so Stu, uh, for those that are listening right now, you know, they may, may be um, you know, motivated to get started on real estate investing. Can you give them an actionable step that they, they can take right now in pursuit of that? Yeah, I mean, I would say just start uh, educating yourself. You know, there's there's so much um, free education. You know, if you're just getting started, mm -hmm. first thing you need to do is, is understand the fundamentals. And um, you know, there's there's tons of books. Uh, there's there's tons of websites. Uh, you know, podcasts, blogs. Um, you know, I I love talking to people about real estate. You know, you could you could connect with us, schedule phone calls. Um, you know, I, I, um, I like to help people and that's a part of our business too. We really like to 
help and, you know, teach along the way uh, while they're doing that stuff. So, you know, first thing is, is get educated. Um, but then at some point, there's only so much education that you can do. And the next step is what we've already talked about is just taking action. And um, that's, you know, first, I would say the first thing is just buy a single family house. It's going to be a rental property. And that's either through a turnkey company like ours, or you can do it on your own if, 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 if it makes sense. And that's where you kind of need to figure out if it makes sense. And that's where that education comes into play a little bit. Um, you also mentioned on the form, uh, building a team and finding partners. Um, so having a partner yourself, uh, what are some key things that you're looking for um, in, you know, finding that partner and building that partnership? Yeah, that's a great question, man. And um, I, I would say that uh, the, for me, building, a, um, creating, having a partner and doing this together was a game changer. Mm. I, I tried to do real estate on my own for a long time. And um, the, the time period between trying to do it on my own uh, versus the shorter period of time that I've done it with my partner, my business partner, um, worlds of difference between uh, the amount of, of, of Benny business, the amount of return on investment uh, that we've done. Because, you know, having another partner that can help you along the way, that can hold you accountable uh, to, you know, when you say you're going to do something and your business partner follows up with you and asks you if you did it. And if you didn't do it, then he's going to give you a bunch of bunch of crap, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, finding a business partner is key, but there, there is definitely some like key components to making sure that you have the right partner. I'd say one of them is you have to make sure that, um, you know, the personalities um, kind of um, help each other out, if you will. So it's kind of like a yin and yang, you know, so for me and, and David, my business partner, uh, I'm, I'm like the engineer, I'm the numbers guy. Uh, you know, I, I do all the, the spreadsheets and the analysis and, and the, the money and the, you know, like that side of things. Um, and David, he, he was an English major. You know, he uh, very kind of uh, big picture, loves to talk on the phone, but like really outgoing, loves to talk to investors, um, loves to have conversations with our contractors. And so, you know, he's, he's kind of like the operations guy and I'm kind of like the, the analysis guy. And so that's super important. If you have two guys that are running numbers all day long, but no one um, has like that other side, like yeah. you're, you're going to fail. So you're, um, you're, would you say you're the, you're the introvert and he's the extrovert? hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you look at, uh, we were actually just joking about it this weekend. We were like talking about like our plans for the weekend and, like him and his family are like, they're going, you know, doing like dinners every night and like events and like their whole entire schedule laid out with like different, you know, things meeting with different people. And he asked what I'm doing. We're like, how oh, we're just, we're just laying low, man. Just hanging out at the house. <laughs> just like, you know, laying around the house, doing nothing. And a hundred percent, man. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, Stu going into uh, coming into our last uh, question here in the first segment, Uh, What's one thing you want our viewers and our listeners to take away from this episode? So I I say um, for those that are active duty, um, I would say don't wait until you're getting out of the service to start planning for your second service. Yeah. Don't wait, like have a plan. Um, And, you know, that along with just, um, the, making the transition easier, it kind of goes back to that, you know, idea of, of like the whole suicide thing. There's, there's so many military uh, and veterans that this transition is really, really hard for people. And if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have a mission as you transition, um, it, it, could, it could be really, really hard. Yeah. And so the early you start planning for that, the better. Man, I love that message. Uh, that's something I, I tried to uh, send to my sailors, you know, when when they do decide to separate and get out. Um, don't wait until you're actually out to find that second service or that purpose, right? Uh, because like you said, it's, it's difficult. That transition is difficult. And yeah. I think that's where some of the issues lie is just, you know, people just have a hard time finding um, something that they had in the military, 
Yeah, absolutely, man. And, you know, it doesn't have to be this huge money making machine, Mm -hmm. you know, it, it can be, it could be anything. I mean, it could, it could be starting a podcast. It could be writing a blog. It could be serving a charity and getting involved in a, a church organization or a charity organization. You know, there's, there's so many different things that you can, you can get involved with and find the point is to find a purpose. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you leave the service, that purpose is gone. Yeah. You don't have that camaraderie anymore and that daily mission that you're going to wake up and go do. And, you know, so you got to find that elsewhere. And so the earlier you start that, the earlier you kind of start thinking about that and kind of planning for that, the better you're off you're going to be. It's a great message, bro. Um, so Stu, coming into our second segment here of the, the podcast. So this is what I call the fast five. This is the same five questions I ask my guests. Okay. Uh, so first question, uh, what's one hobby you enjoy? Oh, man. Um, so I live in Colorado and uh, I, I love snowboarding. I can't wait for the snow season. <laughs> I'm in North Carolina and I miss snowboarding. <laughs> it's been years since I've tried that. But that's this, awesome. is like, this is like the Mecca and you can get the, uh, the Epic Pass and go ski Vail and Keystone and Breckenridge for incredibly cheap. It's amazing. It's awesome, man. Uh, so second question, if you had to choose one person dead or living to hang out with for one day, who would it be and why? Um, yeah, this is kind of sounds cliche, but I, I was going to, I said, uh, Jesus Christ, it'd be pretty, pretty rad to hang out with Jesus for a little while. Somebody actually mentioned that in our, pre, our pre, one of our previous guests mentioned that as well. Yeah. He had, he was like, I pl- have a lot of questions for, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to see some of these miracles that he performed. It'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so next question, recommend a book for our audience to read. Uh, so back to kind of the, the entrepreneur and real estate. Um, it's not necessarily a real estate book, but uh, it'll get your mindset right. Um, and it's Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm. Uh, if, I, if I have a second one, I'd say uh, The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley. That's a really good one too. The Millionaire, millionaire Next Door? Yep. Okay. Um, All right. So next question, what's your favorite quote and why? Um, Do something today that you will thank yourself for tomorrow. That's it's, it's just something that uh, I I have it posted in my office and at my house. um, And it reminds me to just push myself daily. You know, there's going to be days that I wake up and I don't want to get up at 4am to go work on my business or if I don't want to go PT that day. Yeah. But, but I see that and it gives me motivation to go do it anyways. Yeah. That's uh, I think that's something we can all kind of take in, you know, at this, I didn't want to work out today, but I had to get it done <laughs> because I know yep. it'll benefit me later on. You know what I mean? That's right. uh, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a great quote. Um, and then lastly, what do you see yourself in a year, five years, or even 10 years from now? Yeah. Um, so, you know, a year and a half from now, I'm going to be retiring uh, from the Navy and uh, you know taking over this business full time. Um, and and we set uh, annual giving goals mm-hmm. instead of you know profit goals. Um, and so David and I would would love to be giving giving away a uh, million dollars a year. And right now we have where we're giving 10 percent of our profits away. We'd like to flip that. Um, you know, five, 10 years from now, where we're giving 90% of our money away and living off of 10%. So that's our goal. That's an awesome goal, man. <laughs> um, well, um, Stu, I appreciate you for coming on this, uh, on the podcast. Uh, thank you for sharing your message. And uh, I love the company and what you guys are all about. Um, for those that want to stay in touch with you, where can they follow and uh, support you guys? Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, so you can go to our website. It's storehouse 310 turnkey.com. Um, and from there you can get to all of our social media channels. We have a Facebook page an Instagram page, a YouTube channel. Um, we have a, we have a podcast. It's called filling the storehouse faith, family, and financial freedom. I would love it if you come listen to us and uh, follow us and um, subscribe. 
Um, and then uh, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn as well. Okay. Um, so uh, if you, people can connect with me there too. Yeah, I just uh, I just uh, friend requested you or something. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like I said, Stu, I appreciate you for taking the time uh, and, and sharing your message. Uh, and I, I just love the, the company and what you guys are all about. And uh, it's, you know, the mission that we have as well is just giving back to the, uh, to our community and just, you know, helping other people out, helping those in need. Yeah, man, dude, I commend you. You're doing great stuff. Um, and I know you are, you are providing a service to every one of your listeners. Um, and I commend you, man. You're doing great. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you for coming on, Stu. All right. Thank you. All right.